Hello everybody, welcome back to The Breakdown. Today we're gonna to be taking a look at 10 things you probably don't know about the hit Cracker Barrel restaurant. Cracker Barrels have become a staple of American tradition in many places of the country. Even if you don't have one by you, you're probably aware of Cracker Barrel as you travel, as they place them all next to the highways and well, readily visible from the road. So today we're gonna to take a look at 10 things you probably don't know about them and some cool interesting facts about their history. Cracker Barrel first started out in 1969, and honestly, if you look at the original store, you can pretty much see the format of the current stores. The outside wasn't that much different, a little bit bigger, a little bit different, but the look and feel of it has remained mostly the same. So let's dive into 10 things you probably didn't know about Cracker Barrel before today. First though, do me a huge favor, hit that subscribe button. Hit that thumbs up if you're new here. It really does help us because it lets YouTube know you enjoy what we do here. And hopefully one of these videos may help you learn something new. All right, Cracker Barrel started off selling gas. Yes, they were not only a restaurant, but also a gas station. In the late 60s, the interstate highway system was still growing and they uh, offered gas there as gas stations were still just starting to pop up along the route. And throughout the 70s, many of the Cracker Barrel stations continued to offer gas. Now, later into the 80s, they stopped doing that and eventually have removed all gas pumps from their Cracker Barrel restaurants. But now they're kind of getting back into fueling vehicles by offering electronic chargers uh, for smart electric vehicles. So they're kind of coming full circle a little bit there, but still, the idea of them being a gas station has kind of come and gone as they now focus pretty much on being a restaurant and a uh, store to buy items in. All right, number two, Cracker Barrel actually has a fast food version. They launched earlier on a fast food biscuit type restaurant called Holler and Dash in the South. And it was a fairly successful early entry into the fast food market for them as they looked at it. Um, Cracker Barrel is now low in this, Denny's and others have been launching fast food version of their stores. Denny's has several across the country. They recently bought a company called, um, if I can get this name correct, it is Maple Street. There we go, Maple Street. They bought that out. It was a very similar concept and they changed the Holler and Dash to Maple Street Biscuit Stores, focusing very heavily on fast casual biscuits and USA Today said it's really an attempt to try to drag in the millennials, the maybe um, group of people who are looking for something a little faster, something a little bit more high end, something a little bit more modern than the comfort food typically sold at Cracker Barrel. Now Cracker Barrel has this technically as a subsidiary, a separate operation from the Cracker Barrel, but if you look at their menu, you can definitely see some influence from the original Cracker Barrel on the um, Maple uh, stores. Currently, all those fast food locations are in the south. They are expanding to new locations. Hopefully, they'll continue to roll them out. Have you ever been to one of those um, Maple Biscuit restaurants? Leave me a comment. I'd love to know if anybody's actually eating at, excuse me, a Maple Street Biscuit. Uh, is it good? Is it not good? Did you have any idea it's tied to the Cracker Barrel store? Leave me a comment. Let me know. All right. Uh, the, the decorations in the store are all, number three, 100% original. I actually know somebody who was one of the people who went around and found them. There's no reproductions. Everything you see decorating the store is actually a real antique product. And it all comes from one particular family. Um, the Cracker Barrel, when they first launched, they partnered with Dave Evans. And the Evans family has ever since supplied all of the uh, antique looking items across the stores. Now, the Evans family has, uh, since his son has taken over, and they ran an antique store. While they partnered with a lot of buyers, I actually met, when I worked at Camp Maine, a lady who part-time would go hunt for items for um, that uh, antique store. And she would go to different garage sales and flea markets and consignment um, sales and more get um, deals and then turn around and sell them um, out there uh, back to that company. So it was a kind of a cool little side business she had, finding antiques and selling them there. Now I've heard mixed things. I can't prove this. I'd love to know if anybody um, can confirm this, that many of the items, not all of them on the wall, can be purchased, that they do sell a lot of the antiques. 
I kind of got a feeling that this may have been something they used to do but don't do anymore. So I hear mixed things that they don't do that anymore. But there are, um, everything in there is from one particular family. Um, each Cracker Barrel, though, number um, five does, or excuse me, number four, does have five of the same items in each store. So there are five things you will always see in each Cracker Barrel. Start off with an, an um, a, uh, ox yoke that's always somewhere in the store, a uh, horseshoe hanging over the front door, a traffic light over the restrooms, a deer head over the mantel, and a cook stove as a display in the retail section. Those are the five things every Cracker Barrel restaurant must have according to the company. They do this to make sure that you always have some type of familiarity, even though the decorations on the wall are the same or different. There are some decorations that are the same and kind of tie it all together. Number five, you may know that Cracker Barrels close at night, but they do always have staff members on hand. Cracker Barrel is one of the few restaurants that maintains 24 seven staffing. And they do this because at night they have a, an extremely thorough cleaning process, much more so than many restaurants out there. And the clean crew comes in after the closing shift and will clean all night until the morning shift comes in to start cooking. And this helps Cracker Barrel be prepared and ready for the rather long hours and for the breakfast shift. Kind of a cool thing. I didn't realize that most restaurants are getting away from an evening cleaning crew, um, but, but Cracker Barrel still does that. Number six, 90% of the ingredients on the Cracker Barrel menu, menu come from the United States. Now, the remaining items are, for example, their shrimp. They uh, apparently, in the quantity they need them, they were unable to secure a deal. So they go international to purchase Pacific Northwest and, um, excuse me, I'm actually not sure where they're purchasing it from, but they do purchase shrimp internationally to help cover with that. So kind of cool, 90% of their menu is US based. They do try to buy as local as possible, but in some things, when you're a big restaurant, you need to get a uh, certain amount of quality, quantity. You can't always do that with US. So that was kind of an interesting note there. All right, number seven, Cracker Barrel is not affiliated with Kraft's Cracker Barrel cheese. And this actually led to a lawsuit. Um, Cracker Barrel has recently gone into selling a lot more pre-cooked hams and different things in stores under the Cracker Barrel name. Cracker Barrel deliberately decided not to sell cheese to avoid any confusion. Well, Kraft wasn't having any of that. And then they sued to try to block that. Cracker Barrel now uh, under trademark infringement. And they said that there was a reasonable expectation that there may be confusion between the Cracker Barrel cheese and Cracker Barrel ham, for example, in the stores. Now Cracker Barrel has changed their branding on those items that you see in a lot of stores to be CB Old Country Store branded products. So CB Old Country um, Store ham, etc. you may notice in your local uh, restaurant or your local grocery store out there that comes from the restaurant chain but in order to avoid confusion with the crackle barrel cheese which predated them they did that little change there which i thought was kind of interesting um trademark is a very complicated business you can actually have the same name as long as you're not competing in the same territory or the same kind of industry to a point and i guess they said hey crack barrel restaurant is significantly different than cracker barrel cheese from craft well when they start coming to grocery stores selling some of their products there, that appeared to have crossed the line. I don't know, did that ever confuse you? Did you ever assume it was related? Let me know. All right, the Cracker Barrel logo, as you see it today, was actually created in 1977 by a man called Bill Holly, and has remained mostly unchanged since then. Some minor tweaks, little changes here and there, but mostly the logo has remained unchanged that whole time. Kind of a cool thing when you, when a brand can be so successful, they don't feel the need to go update their logo to try to attract a generation. There are currently 663 restaurants, and this surprised me, in only 45 states. I assume, I assume that Cracker Barrel had been more. Only recently did Cracker Barrel start to expand into California as one of the most recent additions as Cracker Barrel continues to go west. Uh, it would be interesting. Uh, do you have, not have a Cracker Barrel near you? Pretty much everywhere I've lived has had a Cracker Barrel within a reasonable distance, so that kind of surprised me. 
And lastly, Cracker Barrel is more heavily getting into cooking your own take-home meals. Cracker Barrel, with everything happening in the world, really wants to find a new way to reach out to customers. And they're saying, hey, why bother cooking that holiday meal? But why bother cooking dinner? And they're increasingly focusing on targeting the business growth related to, hey, take home entire family meals, pre-cooked holiday hams, and more. Now get your orders in early if you want to take advantage of that. But Cracker Barrel seems to be really dedicated to growing their business by offering full meals that you can take home and make things like Christmas and Thanksgiving and more a lot less stressful on whoever's hosting because they don't need to go rush and cook everything there. So there you go, 10 things you may not have known about Cracker Barrel. Love to know if there's any interesting facts I didn't include that you think I should have mentioned. Let me know if you enjoy these series. Leave me a comment, I'd love to hear from you. If you're new here, do me a big favor, hit the subscribe button and hit the thumbs up. It really does help us because it lets YouTube know you enjoy what we do here. And hopefully we can help you learn something new. Thanks for your support, I'll see you real soon. Take care everybody.